Oh, there's no row like a family row. Even better when Celtic cousins fall out. Once upon a time in the land of the Celts, after the long recession, the great King O'Driscoll was grievously offended by Warty Gatland of the Long White Cloud. A call, a call, cried all the banshees of Ireland. Years previously, too, Phillips the Nine had stolen our ball. Tommy Bow, can he get there? No! And more great anguish was poor Ireland's fate. Wales have numbers. If they can offload, they can. Then all the way through goes Cuthbert. Half many in the corner. Then came Joe, the saver from the great white cloud, who gathered all the warriors together on the plains of Kildare and taught them patience and craft. Sexton, Carney, a wide triple. Men of Ireland, he said. Look at these, our cousins. We will trim their locks for them and wash away their fake tans. So he brought in Finn McCool to teach them flying back play. Carney, his 50th cap, is capped magnificently. And Cuchulain to teach the dark arts of them all. Train gets moving, he slip at the back, and he slip over the line. And soon the Harrys will be on the back foot. Let them sing their songs and wave their dragons, said Joe. We'll meet them at the ford of the daughter and kick their asses. It will take more than bread of heaven to save them. Tommy Bow! He's got taste to burn! Keith Earls! O'Driscoll Zemo! And the people were greatly pleased at the prospect of a good family run. Your commentators, Wild Nugent and Donald Lanahan. Thank you very much, Tom. This one's been hyped up to the eyeballs, hasn't it? Time now for the potential of what might be to be part and the reality of what actually is to take centre stage. And here are the 46 men who will play out this particular act of the recent drama that is Ireland against Wales. Paul O'Connell is back in the second row, the only change in the pack from the side that defeated Scotland last week. And in the back line, you have the replacement of Gordon Darcy in for Luke Marshall, as Darcy and O'Driscoll played for the 53rd time together in the centre of that Irish attack and defence. The Welsh have made some changes as well. Jenkins most notably into the front row alongside Hibbert and Adam Jones, Coombs, who made his debut against Ireland last year. Partners Alan Wynne-Jones, Lydia Falatau and Warburton make up their back row. Mike Phillips blows hot and cold, but more often than not, he's very hot for Wales. It's a big test for Rhys Priestland, Robertson Williams in the centre, and that gigantic back line, or back three, I should say, well, two of the three in North and Cuthbert. And there, the replacement benches. Plenty on offer, but they will wait. The 30 that will start this game are on the pitch, and there's the man that will have to keep a cool head. Wayne Barnes, his fourth Ireland against Wales encounter. A very experienced referee. And a man who the players will be looking to for guidance in this opening 40 minutes. It is a belting atmosphere. It is red hot. 80 minutes of controlled fury from both sides Daddy ahead. Rappers. Remember, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Sit back, relax if you can, and enjoy as Jonathan Sexton gets Ireland underway. And no, don't Donald down, Lennon, no. it really has everything. Yeah, I mean, we've been waiting for this game for so long. So many interesting matchups all over the field. And thankfully, the weather conditions so I'm much better than we might have expected well. during the week. Jonathan Sexton is back there for Ireland and claims the ball. Wales up reasonably quickly but slightly fractured as Sexton sends one for Rob Carney to chase Lee Halfpenny, who wins his 50th international cap as the man to take it, but there's a knock forward in the offload and there'll be the first scrum of the afternoon and the put-in will be to Ireland. Well, Halfpenny. we did expect that uh, happen. It would be tested early. Very solid under the high ball, but a worry for Wales. First scrum of the game. Gethin Jenkins back in the side uh, for Paul James, who was so poor last week against Italy. He seemed to go over on an ankle. He's back in his feet. Uh, we'll find out soon enough just how good or bad he is because uh, 
for Scrum coming so early, this would be a huge loss to Wales if he was to go. Well, in some ways, it's just taking the sting out of the opening exchange as everybody settles down and gets an opportunity to set themselves and get into the patterns. And it's it's a tide of emotion, and the players can't have help but being got caught up in this. Yeah, there's no question about that. I think both teams had identified this game as the, the key game of the championship because you win it, you have so much to look forward to. Triple Crown is gone, for example, for both sides if it's lost today, but Jenkins, a key part of this Welsh scrum, back on his feet. Gethin Jenkins winning his 102nd international cap. Well, alongside Richard Hibbert and Adam Jones, Mike Ross, Rory Best and Keane Healy, the front row for Ireland. Two big scrum halves on show today. Conor Murray, six foot two. Mike Phillips at six three, two big men who will have an influence like having an extra back row forward for both sides. Yeah, it is the size. Connor alluded to the size of the Welsh okay. backline. Six of the seven over six feet. But really, it's Just the power in the front five. That's what's going to be key today. Welsh scrum poor against Italy last week. Their line-out was also vulnerable. Six foot nine, Luke Charteris is gone. Ian Evans is also gone. So uh, opportunities for Ireland at the set piece. Set. Down by the front rows again. And the referee penalises Ireland. Full penalty. Well, he's penalising Kean Healy, and uh, uh, well, he was on Kean Healy's side of the scrum. Mike Ross, really the one who's really been good. pinged. You have to keep your head and shoulders above your waist, and um, Wayne Barnes never slow to act early on the scrum. And in a moment, it goes from Ireland being in a position of attack mark, on the gap. Welsh 10-meter line to yeah, yeah. the Welsh having a. Offensive line out just no, outside the Irish open. 22. And Richard eight Hibbert open. winning his 28th international cap will be the man to throw the ball in for Wales. Take it to the front down for Phillips and Priestland. And then in midfield is Jamie Roberts and Jonathan Sexton gets to him alongside Rory Best. The ball slowed up coming back, it's eventually there. And popped up to Hibbert again. Phillips. It off to Falatau. Good work, three. Phillips continues. Hibbard once more. Devon Toner, the first man to make the tackle for Ireland. Warburton chopped down. Ireland after the ball, but Wales still think they have it. And they do. Round the corner goes Gethin Jenkins. That's the Irish 22. All the Welsh players out to the right hand side as you look. And just as I say it, they now move towards the left and Priestland move quickly and then brought North into the game and Trimble up quickly to make the tackle. Good work from Andrew Trimble, that will be a confidence builder as much as anything else. Jenkins, tackle, comes in from Paul O'Connell and Dan Lidiot and the penalty goes to Ireland. Huge moment there for Ireland defensively, Andrew Trimble, so much talk about George North during the week, but Andrew Trimble uh, well up for the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, that is where Wales, Wales build their whole game around getting over the gain line. The challenge for Ireland is to stop that. You've got to meet them head on in the tackle and they've done that. That's a huge psychological uh, big hit for Ireland. Paul O'Connell the one leading the way. Terrific kick from Sexton, big hit from O'Connell, great Wales work here, you'll yours. see it from O'Mahony, stayed on it his feet, fine. in he went, and that's where the penalty came, the lad's talking about his influence before the game, it's taken him four and a half minutes for well, his I, first turnover. Yeah, I think O'Mahony was really looking forward to this, three Lions in that Welsh back line, or in the back row, he was going to challenge them at every opportunity. Best. To Heaslip at the front in Ireland go to the mall. They scored a try off, you'll what? remember last week, as Jamie Heaslip and Rory Best crashed over Not for Ireland's side. second try oh. of the afternoon. You Hasn't dead. got anywhere. The referee warning Ireland to use it, and Conor Murray's got to go in and make Most sure possession is secured. Keane Healy plays scrum half. Gordon Darcy from a standing start is chopped down by Phillips. Murray back on his feet. Sexton. O'Driscoll, straight and true, and four Welshmen in, and Warburton, one of them. Now, where's the ball? Is it there for Ireland, or has it been turned over? It's a scrap, no one secured it until Paul O'Connell put his big frame in charge. Devon Toner out to Dave Carney, who had no one outside him, but has done well to...
squirt through the first line of Welsh defenders and up to the Welsh 22. This is O'Connell. O'Connell charges in and he's hit by Lydiot. Ball should be there for Conor Murray again. Advantage to Ireland is, I think it was Lydiot didn't roll away. And the ball is still there for no Ireland, but the referee decides no advantage accruing. And then there's a little bit of afters as Gethin Jenkins and Rob Carney have a little look at each other. Back we come. Penalty away from the ball. Yeah, and you just see explosive hits coming in from both sides, but Dave Carney doing really well, space at a premium, yet he manages to get in behind that Welsh back line, make the ball available, and that's the key. But uh, I think Dan Liddy at the one not rolling away on the deck, and uh, big opportunity now for Johnny Sexton. Excellent form last week against Scotland, and uh, you just feel every penalty kick is going to be vital okay, in this game. Draw that a bit closer. It's his closer, sixth yeah. cap against Wales. He scored 38 points. Today, his 40th international cap. Yeah, but you slowed that ball. You Third slowed now the ball. on the all-time point-scoring list for Ireland. And an opening opportunity as we head towards seven minutes at the Aviva. playing a role in a, a vital turnover. Well, we were expecting weather of biblical proportions. It hasn't quite come to that yet, although the forecast isn't great for later on in the afternoon. But not absolutely perfect by any means. The wind's still a factor. Don't let the sunshine fool you. And the kickers and hookers in particular, and those trying to catch those big garyons that have been sent in, will definitely have to be on their guard. Here is Jonathan Sexton. Lee Halfpenny watches it all the way, gathers plenty of time to consider the run back, which is the option that he takes. Here's Falatau. Tremble backed off him a little. Falatau has great pace. And he's bundled into touch where two or three photographers. In fact, one of our cameramen is sent spiraling backwards, but he's on his feet. And the ball will be put into Ireland. Four well, plays. I think Falatau is the consummate Four footballer. Five. Incredible faith, open, uh, pace with him. The cameraman, I'm sure, he wouldn't want to see that, but he goes all getting hit by both Rob Carney and Paulupe Falatau. No longer Toby Falatau. And back to his original name, Ireland. Looking to push that mole forward and doing a decent job. And his an advantage there for them. Referee awards the penalty in from the side against Lydia. That's outstanding play for Ireland. I did anticipate that they would have a dominance in the line-out area. Sean Edwards uh, was at pains to point out all week, the week, uh, the work that Wales were doing in trying to defend that line-out ball. But once you get the momentum going, it is very difficult to stop. Ireland are very well structured. They get the ball to the tail of it, and the only way to stop it is to bring it down illegally, and that's what uh, Lydia has done. That's two penalties he's given away at this stage, and. Um, you just wonder if Ireland could manufacture a line out 10, 15 yards out. Really, they're in a good position to make it count. Wales four, move! Andrew Coombs, the man who's told to get back in his line. My referee Wayne Barnes, all sorts of movement in the line out. O'Connell comes forward, and Conor Murray saw the gap that Falatau created by trying to come up quickly and cut off the pass. Henry is hit by Mike Phillips. Don't go in that. Murray no. digs it out and it's there for Jonathan Sexton, Gordon Darcy, Sam Warburton in on him quickly. Andrew Trimble there to try and help and O'Connell secures possession. Murray, Mike Ross 
And Ross gets up to the gain line, maybe an inch or two forward. Kean Healy. Hibbard goes low, and Healy is eventually taken down. O'Mahony, he'll revel in this. O'Connell on his shoulder. Ball not protected, Murray has to go back, he's caught in possession. Yeah. Henry there to play scrum half, and now Jamie Heaslip and Bob Carney had offered himself. Heaslip chose to hold on to possession. O'Connell spins it wide. Darcy did well to get down and pick that one up. Ball knocked out of his grasp, but Best is there. There is some ferocity at the breakdown. Murray. O'Driscoll, a little dink in behind. Halfpenny was alert to it. Well, there's a wall of red jerseys right across the field. Line speed from Wales is excellent. Uh, space at a premium here, not an inch available. Brian O'Driscoll just noticing they're up so quickly. There is space available in behind. It was an area that Ireland exploited in the opening 30 minutes of the corresponding game last year. But uh, Lee Halfpenny, people talk about his place kicking, but really he's an excellent fullback in terms of uh, his positional sense. Uh, as we watch here, Rob Carney, what a pickup from him. Gordon Darcy. Sorry. Down for Conor Murray. Jonathan Sexton. And Driscoll. And he's hit hard and he's thrown the interception. No, Driscoll not back on his feet. Not Wales the have the ball. Coombs. Trimble up, makes the tackle. No, Driscoll's still on the floor. No, back you go, Nats. Jenkins. Phillips, injured player on both sides. I think it's George North who's hobbling back for the Welsh. Here's Priestland, Halfpenny, Jamie Roberts, Cuthbert. Wales have again, straight flat line. And the referee awards the penalty again to Ireland. Just relax, hey, fellas, fellas, put the ball down. Ball down. No, put the ball down. Put the ball down. Put the ball down. Worryingly for Ireland, Brian O'Driscoll still down. He got the full force. Six, George six, North, two. six foot four, 17 stone. And that is where the line speed of the Welch is just incredible. Scott Williams, I think, was actually the one that hit him. Uh, he felt the full force of that. It did look a little bit high, but he caught the shoulder. And. Uh, didn't you just know it? All the hype and all the attention on Brian O'Driscoll coming into this game, his penultimate match here on the Aviva Stadium. What a pity it would be if he had to leave the stage. Didn't quite pick that up, but I think he's saying he's just winded. <laughs> I'll tell you, if that's all he is after taking a hit like that, that's why he's known as the warrior. Oh, listen to the crowd. Sixteenth cap against Wales, he scored seven tries. Almost as if he looked across the line to say, well done, mate, you got the first hit in, I'm not gone anywhere. Sexton probes the touchline and gives Ireland the put into the line out right on the Welsh 22. Yours and again, there's a Thomas. little meeting of the back line. Line's yours. I'm not so sure they're going to get this ball because uh, on the yeah. evidence of what we've seen from the strength of that line out mall, uh, I think man, Paul O'Connell, Peter Romani, Deb Toner, they're just waiting for the opportunity to try and really test this Welsh pack. Got to secure possession first, which they do through Peter O'Mahony, and then they go to the mall. Chris Henry has it at the back, and they sort themselves out and try to get the body positions right to move forward and continue to move forward, and Wales try to disrupt Ireland, continue on their way. Now, where's the ball? It's there for Conor Murray. Good work. Gordon Darcy again is the one that's asked to carry. Wales try to hold him up, Darcy hits the deck and Murray has the ball. Sexton, cross-field kick, lovely little dink. Trimble just ran out of room. Inches, really, 
Trimble manages to catch it, but the ball had gone out. But again, you go back to that line out mall. Wales have a decision to make. Do they challenge in the air or on the ground? We're just looking here at the cross field kick from Johnny Sexton. Just that little bit too long. You could see the intention. But uh, as I mentioned, Wales, big decisions to make when defending that line out. It's okay, that's good. Short line out for Hibbert. Up goes Paul O'Connell, back on the Irish side, Murray has it, Coombs goes after him, Murray holds on, Alan Wynne-Jones eventually puts him to ground. Good work from the Irish line-out, O'Connell to Kean Healy, Jenkins in to try and rob the ball. It's still there for Ireland, Jamie Heaslip, Falatau, one of the tacklers, Warburton the other, Sexton holds on, almost... Able to pop it up, it's there for O'Connell, who straightens the line, direct from Ireland. Penalty again at the breakdown. Ireland have the advantage, Sexton sends it high, Trimble will compete, North goes up, back on the Irish side, but the referee says no advantage, and we go back for the penalty. Well, it was a kick for nothing, Johnny Sexton knowing that he had the penalty, but... Yeah. Listen to the lads before the game talking about the influence Take of Paul O'Connell. We've only had 16 minutes of this game. Already he's put in a massive hit on Dan Lydiot. Uh, he's carried the ball well, manufacturing that penalty. Uh, as we can see, their Wales off their feet again. And he was the one who set up the field position with the steal from uh, Alan Wynne Jones. O'Connell, that is what leadership is about. Leading by example, no better exponent. Say that again, mate, sorry. Uh, Wales have been forced into a change. Liam Williams of uh, Scarlet comes in for his ninth international cap, and it's Scott Williams who's gone. He's holding the right hand up around his waist, suggests some sort of shoulder problem. Well, I think that was in the collision with Brian O'Driscoll. opportunity for Sexton to extend Ireland's lead. Over it goes. Ireland six, Wales nil. And Wales have a decision to make, no Royal, because Liam Williams is a back three player. Uh, I'm just wondering, will Wales put George North into the 13 channel? Uh, he played there for Northampton, you might remember, when they played against uh, Leinster here in the Heineken Cup with uh, uh, a big impact, if you remember. He scored uh, in that opening half, and uh, he, he'll be a handful if he plays in midfield. Restart is called and collected by Andrew Trimble. Up comes Williams to make the tackle. Inside. Murray with the kick, and it's a very good one. Well, heading towards the end of the first quarter, you got the line again, Green. from an Irish perspective, territory, yes, possession, yes, and I suppose crucially from their perspective, what they've done with that territory and possession, they will be very happy with that opening 20. No question, they've got the points on the board when they've got into the opposition too, but of equal importance, Royal, they've stopped Wales getting over the gain line, their defence has been enormous. Long, long way to go. Forward hold. Friesland sends it high, Trimble, who's had a lot of work, comes and claims magnificently, and Ireland get the penalty again. Well, those 50-50 calls going Ireland's way at the moment. Uh, Liam Williams just on the field, not releasing Andrew Trimble. And just to confirm, George North is uh, positioned now at outside centre. Oh, Sexton will be hopping mad with himself. He's missed touch and missed the oh, opportunity forwards. to force Ireland deep inside oh. Welsh territory. They do have it back, though, to Rob Carney, who I've rarely seen as focused before a game as he was in the build-up to this one in the 20 minutes or so before kick-off. Kean Healy bounces off the first tackle, gets Ireland up to the Welsh 10-metre line. Murray, Sexton. That one is for Darcy to chase. Halfpenny comes and does very well under pressure. Well, he's not the biggest of men, but he's uh, really solid under that high ball. But going back to the missed penalty, Royal, 
you would expect to Johnny Sexton. Like a he, he was looking for every extra inch, and really that's a pity because Ireland with the line out mall, early evidences, they have the dominance there, and uh, you just feel that's a missed opportunity. Half and he kicks it down, almost the centre of the pitch where Carney was in weight, and Carney sends it high. And up goes Priestland, and Carney challenges, but it's knocked forward off Rob Carney, and it's fallen into the arms of Liam Williams, and now Wales go Carney wide. Over! And it's Cuthbert who has it out there, and North is on his shoulder. Tackle from O'Driscoll, he slipped, went in search of the ball, but it's still there for Wales, and Jenkins offloads to Alan Wynne-Jones, and Keane Healy goes low, and Wynne-Jones gets the ball away, that's Lydias in the centre of midfield, but Ireland after it, but this time illegally at the breakdown, and Wales get their second penalty. Well, that's the issue, when you compete for ball on the ground like that. OK, yeah. calm down. Oh, no, 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 just listen to me. You've just got to calm down. You can't be screaming at me. I've got to make those decisions. You just need to calm down. You've got the penalty, all right? We'll watch. Yeah, just listening to Wayne Barnes there. Uh, Mike we'll Phillips, the we know he Straight does get it, excited please. every now and then. But Peter Omani, age poacher, you are going to get pinged at times. It happened to Sean O'Brien against New Zealand. He was Full outstanding penalty, yeah. that day. But the back row forward has to play on the edge all the time. And... Um, if you're going to give away a penalty against Wales, make sure it's in the in their opposition half. Don't give Lee Halfpenny the chance to kick at goal. What it has done, of course, is given them a very good uh, uh, attacking opportunity here. Gaps, good please, offload Ireland. from Alan Wynne Jones. Dan Ireland, Lydiot hasn't really got into up. the game. That's middle. But Ireland just need to be a little Ireland. bit smarter at the breakdown. Wales were in this position before, but couldn't manufacture anything taken by Andrew Coombs and now with Hibbert and Rory Best is there to meet his opposite number Wales in to try and clean it out Ireland are competing again have they turned it over again that would be remarkable it is outstanding work from Ireland at the breakdown and into touch it goes and I have a sense it may well be Omani again well, that is brilliant stopping Wales on their tracks as it is, Ireland are forcing Wales to throw to the front of the line-out. The only clean ball they're winning is from Coombs at the front. It's almost as if Ireland are conceding that area, then working their way, not allowing them over the advantage line. But Omani continuing from where he was last week. That's three brilliant steals. Wales take it at the front of the line-out, but they a mouth full of Jamie Heaslip, followed by Conor Murray, and are forced back towards their own 10-metre line. Williams... They'll feel they need to go through some patterns, Wales, and get themselves into this game. Forward it's hold. been very much a defensive effort played in their own half. Here's Trimble. Warburton wraps him up. Roberts goes in, and Ireland need to get numbers there to secure possession, which they do. Here's Sexton, who feigns Forces one way, goes back yep. the other way, and kicks it down. And Priestland never budged, watched it all the way, and sees a big open space over on that far side, which... Brian O'Driscoll will scamper back towards, but that is a probing kick from the Welsh out half, and it gives his side a lift and forces them back towards the Irish 22 again. Well, it's also recognition from That's Priestland that Wales need That's to good. try and get some territory uh, because the wind's slightly favouring Wales, but they just can't control the ball. As we see Ireland here, Peter Romani turning over more possession. But... Uh, also from a line-out point of view, last line-out, you see Wales having to throw a little dinky one to the front. When you see that happening, you know you're putting the opposition's line-out under pressure. Rory Best, 72nd international cap. Scored a couple of tries against Wales, one in 07, one in 2012. Ireland trying to get that more moving forward again. What? Referee warns him, Murray saw a little gap. Carney not held in the tackle, entitled to get up. Lydiot goes in search of the ball, but it's protected by Ireland. Here's O'Mahony. Murray. Not out of the top drawer of Conor Murray. Box kicks and it's given possession very cheaply back to Wales. Halfpenny decides he's going to continue the aerial ping pong that is not gone. and it's knocked forward by a Just welsh a hand forward. and after that and it's been a poor couple of seconds in terms of delivery of the basic skills from both sides 
will resume with a scrum and a put into Ireland. Yeah, it has, Ryle, but I think Wales are running out of ideas. When you see Lee Halfpenny kicking up a ball, a ball to nothing, really. Wales, they seem to have lost their shape in the back line. Uh, okay, no opportunity yeah. there for I him to go to wide. Uh, I think Ireland have Wales seriously rattled here. Look. He's going to hit high, he's going to keep his arm nice and high. Shoulder, green one, make sure when you come down. Green one, shoulder. Green one, thank you. Crouch. Bind. Just the second Set. scrum of the afternoon. The first one ended up in a penalty to Wales. Yeah, it's incredible. You can practice scrummaging all week, and uh, I think Ireland had only eight in the game against Scotland. Uh, you know, when you have a dominant scrum, you're looking for more. But uh, again, the weather conditions are favouring less scrums. Handling is a little bit better than we might have expected earlier on in the week. Crouch. Bind. Set. And it's Ireland's penalty this time. The referee straight on to get them Jenkins. And we still haven't had a fully completed scrum. Yeah, he moved oh, over to that four. side of the scrum because uh, the, the, the issues were between getting Jenkins Rory and Mike Ross early on. This needs to change, this needs to get better. Just talking to Rory Best there, he leads the scrum. As Hooker, you're the one in charge of... Um, the engagement, um, high, please. getting Jenkins, he, again, just having a word with Jenkins, get your arm up, arm must be up and over the opposition tight head. We need it stable. Not for me, they're allowed, on the bind, maybe they're allowed. High arms, stability. The scrum debate continues. Five, both Ireland, through that penalty, have force this line out it's taken at the tail by Devon Toner now Sexton and O'Driscoll at phenomenal pace and on a good angle gets the momentum going and then Ireland skip it out to Carney who's got Trimble outside running out of space steps back inside lovely work from Trimble excellent six seven meters short of the Welsh line no scrum half for Ireland and it's picked up by Wales and Carney for a moment thought he could sense an interception, but Ireland, having done the build-up work, the execution at the breakdown wasn't what it was supposed to be. Oh, and forwards. Wales fire it to touch and breathe a huge sigh of relief. Well, it was brilliant work from Andrew Trimble because uh, he had no space to work with, but Rob Carney saved uh, a very important intervention, I think. But just look here, Carney, Trimble stretching out to the touchline, dances inside Alan Wynne Jones and Adam Jones, keeps the ball, uh, just breaks out here. Ireland just losing their focus. But if Rob Carney hadn't come in there, Wales had a two man overlap, could have had a run down the field. Best he slipped. Murray again, Falatau shoots out of the line out. Murray is forced to hold, uh, hold on. Not controlled again, it just popped out. And Keen Healy has to go back to retrieve the ball. Coombs puts the tackle on him. Devon Toner playing scrum half. O'Connell there in support. O'Mahony also. And now Connor Murray is restored to his rightful position. Sexton, despite the efforts of Gethin Jenkins, gets the kick away. Up goes Trimble again. And it's the substitute Liam Williams who did very well to win the ball in the air and it's quicker ball for Wales and they've recognised that maybe they have something out wide Roberts runs into Jamie Heaslip, O'Driscoll oh, stands off, Toner as well, don't commit to that rook, Gethin Jenkins Phillips, Priestland Lee Halfpenny Falatau, Gordon Darcy in front of him, Falatau doesn't hold on to the ball, knocks it forward, advantage Ireland, and who's there to hoover it up? O'Mahony, he slip. Lydiot is the one to make the tackle. Don't go in there, no, no! Phillips told to leave it alone, Henry makes sure that he does. Murray, box kick, again Halfpenny, is up to make the tackle, is Carney, not controlled by Wales. Ireland pouring in numbers, looking for possession, but I think Wales have secured, they have. Here's Coombs through the dummy, a couple of Irish defenders bought it, and Heaslip looks for possession. 
And the referee says, penalty Wales. Andrew Coombe's doing well there, very good ball carrier. He's a converted back row, so very comfortable with the ball in hand. Ireland are gambling, though. They're, they're, they're slowing down the recycling of the Welsh possession. Um, Wales just not managing to get their big runners in over the game line. We're just uh, glimpses of what Jamie Roberts is capable of. But interestingly as well, Ryle, most of the injuries are Welsh. They seem to be going down way more often as we watch Andrew Coombe's uh, in possession. Jimmy Heaslip there is deemed okay, off his feet, that's Sam. what the penalty is for. But Wales seem to be feeling the impact of the collisions more than Ireland, even though there was so much talk about the six-day turnaround, it hasn't impacted the way Ireland are playing. Wales, yeah. Okay, fellas, we good? As we okay. head towards the half-hour mark, Donald, are we at a point now when you consider the possession and the territory and the momentum that Ireland have, that they look at that scoreboard, as will Wales, and say, from a That'll Welsh perspective, it could be worse. From an Irish perspective, it should be more. Yeah, I think, um, but again, it's a question of, of taking your chances when they arise. I think Ireland will be quite happy. 6-0 in this game is a big lead, given that there's nothing between the sides. Uh, but Wales, as I, I think the most important thing is that Ireland has stopped Wales from getting that momentum over the game line. That's the key to their game. They don't have a plan B. Short line-out for Hibbert and Wales. Been a set piece that hasn't worked for them and hasn't worked again as Devon Toner pulls it back on the Irish side and a ball should be there for Conor Murray. Keane Healy does the clean out job with a certain ferocity. Williams waits, Trimble, he's been outstanding in the opening half hour, competes. Hibbert had the ball, he dropped it, and Mike Ross sticks out an arm and pulls it back on the Irish side. Conor Murray kicks it away. Lee Halfpenny and Sexton with plenty of time. Big kick from Jonathan Sexton, fielded by Liam Williams, making his Six Nations debut, although this is his ninth international cap. Trimble fielded that well. Carney had a look. Halfpenny comes again, the fullbacks meet. Who has it? Ireland, Murray, Sexton, Heaslip goes in chase. Priestland is the defender for Wales. Priestland gets the ball. And touch was his only option. And the crowd are on their feet and sense that this is a pivotal moment. Uh, without question, this is the area of the field that Ireland wanted to get into. But you talk about matchups before the game, you talk about hangovers from the Lions tour. 15, Rob Carney really never had a chance to compete for that Lions test place because of Lee Halfpenny's kicking ability. The aerial ability of both players unquestioned, but there it was, hanging in the air, a 50-50 between the two. Carney won it, and as a result of that now, Ireland in a position where they've scored against both New Zealand and Scotland from a line-out mall. Possession is the first task secured, Henry. Healy, Ireland on the march, over the line and down! Try given! I think it's Henry. Ireland have the first try of the afternoon at the Aviva, and it is Chris Henry who scores his first international try. And you knew when they got into that position that that had the potential to be the outcome and how they delivered. Yeah, and it goes back, this is where the 50-50 uh, ball was. Carney doing brilliantly, he fought and he fought, he won the possession in the end. That set up the field position here. A precision from Johnny Sexton, parallel to the touchline. Priestland left with no choice, and here we have it, the line-out. Toner providing, look at the momentum of the mall. Right from the minute that Chris Henry had the ball, uh, they just couldn't stop it. And that is textbook, taken off the training ground. John Plumtree, the forwards coach, uh, can really be happy with that. But there's a man, the number seven jersey. Everybody fretted when Sean O'Brien was out of the team and what a lot he was, a loss. But Chris Henry, what a moment for him. Shows what?
terrific strike. Up go the flags. And now that scoreboard reflects what Ireland will feel has been their dominance of this first half. 33 and a half minutes gone, Ireland 13, Wales nil. Well, you asked the question a few minutes ago, did 6-0 reflect Ireland's dominance? Uh, they would have been happy with the position, but they're 10 times happier now. Execution magnificent once they get in that 22. Trimble calls, Williams comes up, Phillips is the man to make the tackle. Good work, nine. Murray. Halfpenny again in the perfect position and fires the pass out. A long pass to Reese Priestland, but Ireland's line was up quickly. Oh, oh. Dave Carney knew there was space in behind. Priestland saw it, and Carney retreats and does well. Downfield it goes, and it's Priestland again. And Halfpenny who looked to go back the other way. Here's Williams. He took his eye off the ball, and Keen Healy knew he wasn't going to get there, stayed on his feet, waited for Williams to get to his, and put the Welshman to ground. But Wales, crucially from their perspective, have held on to possession. Darcy trying to make a nuisance of himself. Alan Wynne Jones plays scrum half. Coombs is the man to take it forward, a bit like a year ago in the first half. Coombs, one of the few Welshmen in the pack to stand up to Ireland. Here's Trimble again. He's seemingly everywhere. Carney through the first tackle. Warburton puts him to ground along with Phillips. He slipped. There's an intensity about Ireland. Offload, Devon Toner. Toner looks for Rory Best. Best does well. Darcy slapped away by Coombs, but into a Irish arms. I think it was Mike Ross. Sexton going to punch it into that corner again. And that's OK, says the touch judge, despite Liam Williams suggesting that it hit the line and therefore was out on the full. But Ireland are looking to turn the screw and Wales look shell-shocked. Well, Liam Williams was uh, offering that opinion in hope well. because it was miraculously uh, in play. Brilliant kick again from Johnny Sexton. He's had a marvellous opening 35 minutes to this game. You just look at it, it's about a half an inch inside the line. Perfect. Green open. That was very close. Green open. See why Williams asked the question. I think that evidence was conclusive. There's a free at the I line out. Green open three to well, talk to your players at the back to tell you. And Ireland penalised for not keeping the gap in that line out. Yeah, but what they're doing, Royal, is they're putting pressure on the Wales line out. Every time they form up, they're looking around it as if Ireland know where the ball is going. And Wales, there is a definite panic in that Welsh uh, pack in terms of where do they even throw the ball into the line out because uh, O'Connell, Tone, O'Mani, Chris Henry. All putting pressure on that Welsh throw. Gaps five, good. Best goes towards the tail, Devon Toner again. Sexton takes it up to the line and then pops it off to Gordon Darcy. O'Driscoll makes sure possession is secured. Sexton back inside to Rory Best to acrobatically takes the ball, pivots and takes the tackle. Murray, Sexton, hold, hold nine. over Thank the head you. of Williams, and the bounce away from the Welsh replacement and down deep into Welsh territory, and as the clock ticks towards the 40-minute mark, Ireland, albeit with a Welsh put into the line-out, are asking the questions again. Hibbert thinking about trying to take it quickly while you watch that replay. It's not going to happen now. But no doubt Ireland will compete and ask questions of this Welsh line-out once again. O'Connell readies himself, but Hibbert and Coombs do what they need to do. Trimble. Carney, did he knock it forward? Yes, he did. That's a rare moment from... Andrew Trimble and Rob Carney, Trimble in truth of inaccuracy. Yeah, I think it's the first mistake Rob Carney has made since the championship has started. He's been uh, outstanding, carrying forward his excellent form from Leinster. But uh, Johnny Sexton is giving a masterclass in terms of directing traffic, pinning Wells back, uh, superb line kicking out of him. He's all, you can see, Riley, he's almost liberated, back in the company of people that he's comfortable with. He's had a difficult start to his career in Racing Metro, but he's just growing here in front of us. Set. Well, the scrum has been 
unmanageable from the referee's perspective. He offers another penalty, Phillips is his want, takes it quickly and keeps the ball in hand. Ireland had a gap there, but they shut the door reasonably quickly. Lydias, well, there was obstruction. Well, there's nothing going right for Wales at the moment. When you consider nine of this Welsh side started that third test against Australia. And is he confident or what? Exactly right. He's, He's having a, a, a pop of goal from, what, I'd say seven, eight metres inside his own half. And you just see Andrew Coombs, the one. Again, Difficult man. for him to get out of the way, but it was yeah, obstruction. Okay, we'll, we'll the see. wind, we'll have a quick it is swirling. It's obviously um, Sorry, in favour of Ireland more than I thought, given that Johnny that, Sexton is uh, favouring this position. Well, there are a few flags down on the left-hand yeah. side as we look, and they are blowing yeah. okay. at this point more in the direction of being okay, behind quick, yeah. Ireland's yeah. back, although it depends when you happen to look at them. Yeah, look, I'll get you closer to make sure that can't happen, but for me I can see the feet just chasing through, so... This may well be the last act of the first half. The clock hits 40. Sexton's kick will not get there. And that should be and is that. Well, of course, the wind is all over the place. We can't say I don't have the wind in the second half, although Wales did seem to have some advantage there in the first. OK, it's back to Ryle and Dono. Thank you very much, Tom. Ireland making their way back. Wales already there and just checking to see if there are any changes on either side. There's the Irish try score from the first half. Chris Henry just making his way. There he is. And no changes on either side from the teams that finished the first half. If you joined us a little late, Liam Williams on for the Welsh in the back line. And Scott Williams, the centre, had to go. And it's meant that George North has moved into outside centre and Williams to the wing. What answers do Wales have? If any, we're about to find out in the second half of this test match. Second weekend of RBS Six Nations. Calcutta Cup match to come after this between Scotland and England and then France and Italy tomorrow. But all eyes on the Aviva and this, well, you have to say, outstanding effort from Ireland in the first half, considering the hype, considering all that had gone before it, all the questions that were being asked. You couldn't have asked for more from Ireland in that first half. No, you couldn't. I think Ireland have outthought and they've outfought this Welsh outfit, uh, only conceding three penalties in that opening 40 minutes. And we saw what Wales could do last year when Ireland looked to be out of sight and over the horizon. They managed the recovery. And that won't help their cause as Ireland turned the ball over and Darcy gets away and passes to Murray and Devon Toner did well to control it and now it's with Peter O'Mahony who decides to add a kicking game to the back row forward and that is absolutely perfect. Well, Rolling everything the guy is doing at the moment is just outstanding. Uh, consummate footballer oh played on the wing of your course ball. for Ireland at a stage last year but Rory Best one ball. on one. Uh, Hibbard again, a Lions combination. One hooker made the test side, the other didn't. Best making his uh, presence felt. Wales win their own line out ball. Post. And Priestland delays. Best got up there and wears it off to. It's with Williams. Back with Priestland again. This time unopposed. Sends the ball downfield where Andrew Trimble gathers has Rob Carney Trimble thought about the kick then decided to hold on and Warburton eventually puts him to ground Ireland holding on to possession here Sexton who sees a gap and asks Carney to try and find a way through quick ball again Murray for Darcy who will undoubtedly carry it up Roberts tries to get to him Phillips eventually puts him down but not before Darcy gets across the gain line Dave Carney who found a way through a couple of doors that looked like they were shut in the first half not able to on that occasion Rory Best with Paul O'Connell on his shoulder, Connor Murray, Sexton, Ireland going through the phases again, Sexton saw a gap, Hibbert made the tackle along with Lydiot, Murray, O'Driscoll back inside, terrific ball handling from Ireland, 
Murray. O'Driscoll, little kick in behind. And into touch it goes. Did it come off a Welsh defender on its way through? Paul O'Connell seems to think so, and he's right. It did. It took a little clip. You could almost... I think I picked it up on the sound from the referee's microphone. And that's what's given Ireland the put into the line-out. Kick from O'Driscoll. Have a little look. Yep. Yeah. Is it Liam? No. Priestland, I think. Uh, and again, you go back. I think Ronan O'Gara highlighted Captain. last week in Captain. studio that Priestland Captain. takes a long time to get the ball from his hand to his foot. Uh, and Ireland have worked on that because uh, block kick there, first one. He felt that would happen, but again the line out in the right position in the field. Surely too far out to consider a mall that they could score from. Well, O'Connell gathers possession and advantage being played to Ireland. O'Connell, was he taken out in the air? We'll go back and look after this advantage plays out. And again, all sorts of movement. Runners asking questions of the Welsh defence. Paul O'Connell, though, takes the direct route and sets it up for Conor Murray. Wales have their defence set. Murray looking for the little offload to Brian O'Driscoll, but just couldn't manage it. Keen Healy takes it around the corner, and again, it's done with purpose, it's done with pace. And the ball is there for O'Connell and Mike Ross. And Ross is put to ground by Lydiot and Warburton. Possession there for Murray. He slip, dances around Hibbert. O'Mahony on his shoulder. And the referee no decides back no back advantage. Uh, we'll go back for the original penalty at the line out. Yeah, I just wondered, uh, uh, thankfully the referee hadn't said advantage over. You just see Paul O'Connell in the air, in possession, but he's taken out before you're he comes down to ground. You're taking the supporter. You just see it there. He's taking the supporter is the referee. Yeah. Clarification. Whoever tackle number one. But Ireland have a decision now. Will they go for goal? I think they will. Johnny Whoever Sexton. tackle number one. Why not? He's uh, three from four, but the one before half time was a bit speculative. I think he knew the clock was up and he said, Look, nothing to lose, have a go. He just wondered, was there any debate about going to the corner? But I think Paul O'Connell is right. Build the score, keep it going, get Wales out of range. Remember, at one stage last year, Ireland led by 27 points, Wales fought their way back into the game. I saw them do it against South Africa in November, but right now, the door seems to be slammed shut in their face. Well, those flags I was telling you about in the first half are standing limp at the moment. Behind the Welsh goal as Jonathan Sexton lines this one up. the flags again first blood of the second half is to Ireland almost six minutes gone they lead it by 16 points to nil yeah, and the decision to go for post absolutely correct there Ireland getting the reward and uh, incredible to think while we're 46 minutes into the game Lee Halfpenny hasn't been offered one kick at goal yet Priestland changes the point of attack and it's taken by Cuthbert O'Driscoll oh, there to make the tackle. tackle only. Wales will surely have a patch in this game. They haven't had one yet. Falatau is cut off before he can get to the game line. Quick ball though, and Priestland looks to see what's in midfield. That pass was flat, some of the crowd believing it was forward. Phillips. That's good work. And Halfpenny manages to get away. Wales almost up to the Irish 22. Adam Jones winning his 91st international cap today. Drives Wales towards the Irish 22. Messi, scrappy ball, but Phillips does OK. Hibbert tries to run over Peter O'Mahony, but is put to ground. Priestland once more. Roberts attacks the Irish 22. Jamie Roberts away from the first tackle of Brian O'Driscoll and is put to ground. Phillips, Priestland, space at a premium, and George North is wrapped up. This is close as Wales have come to putting something on the board and Ireland's defence is asked questions and they call up the big guns Wales, Cuthbert the one to carry. Phillips, Darcy, 
and Toner combined to put him to ground. Slow ball. Salatau will pick and go. Murray and O'Driscoll combined to put him down. Wales knocking on the door. Phillips, Warburton. Ireland up quickly. Tackle made. Ireland going after the ball again. And would you believe it? It is a masterclass from Peter Omani. Every time he puts on that Irish shirt, he grows in stature and he grows in importance. Well, people wondered why at 23 years of age he was made captain of Munster. That's why. If that gets involved again, he might stay on the pitch. Calm down, he's gone back 10 metres. Now, Mike Phillips is warned for the final time, it would seem. Yeah, but that's royal. That's all signs of frustration in Wales. That's exactly what you want to see. Their key players shouting and roaring, losing their heads. Omani, uh, his work at the breakdown has just been incredible in this game so far. But again, just why I had uh, preached caution a while ago, it's the first time that Wales managed to build any momentum. They were getting the Norths and the Roberts running at the opposition. But look at Omani, on his feet, entitled to contest possession. He's not the tackler. And uh, as a result of that, that is a textbook uh, poach from him. Rory Best to Devon Toner. Ireland go to the mall, best at the back. Kean Healy joins him and adds his considerable weight to get the momentum moving forward. Ireland with the advantage again. Little stink over the top from Sexton, half and he read it well. And there is no advantage, so back we go. Their dominance in that line out area is so pronounced, it's, it's becoming embarrassing for Wales. I mean, Ireland are able to do what they want up front. Paul O'Connell, just that calm assurance. Devon Toner next to him, uh, he's having a marvellous game as well. Everybody working their socks off. Key and Healy carrying, harrying, putting in the tackles. And of course, Johnny Sexton, uh, as Connor said at half time, he's just given a master class in terms of game management. Sexton's penalty brings play halfway between the Welsh 10 metre line and the 22 and Ireland will get the put into the line out but this is the type of control I'm talking about ball at the back of the mall all Wales can do is collapse that you see Paul O'Connell being dragged down he doesn't have the ball and uh, I think the crowd are saying it all forward but uh, Dave Carney again and that has been a, a sign of the hunger within the team the work of the two wingers Dave Carney and Andrew What's Trimble coming in off down. their wing constantly looking for work and when you consider Ireland coming in without Tommy Bow, without Luke Fitzgerald without it's Keith Earls and uh, both Carney and Trimble uh, really standing up and justifying their selection uh, it's not Carney's fault that it was forward but a super game from him Yeah, we're going to come this side and have a look. OK, watch on. To the left of that and nice and close to it. Let me come in. Adam Wynne-Jones well, asking the Good questions, night. grasping at straws, it would seem, from even Alan's the body language. Extra. There's no belief even in the questions that he's asking of the referee. Well, I couldn't agree more with him. And he's complaining to the ref about Ireland losing inside arms and line-outs. You know they're under pressure. Completed scrum is there for Wales and they get towards North moving forward. A rare occasion. Can you come off the ball, please? And Ireland penalised this time. 
for. Must clearly see you come off the ball. Not coming off the ball, and it's O'Driscoll who's penalised. Got to yeah. be seen to release the tackler Remember before you go you competing. The the yeah, but the half, tackle, so I think, was affected by Gordon Darcy. He spoke during the week. Look, he's given away two or three stone to some of these Welsh backs, but he's specialised in that chop tackle, taking players around the ankles. And what happens then is O'Driscoll comes in over the top, looking for the poach. Oh, just need just see to here, the there is Darcy, in and around the ankles, Thank and O'Driscoll then as the support player, looking for the steal, right, but unfortunately, side. Darcy pinged for not releasing. Thank you. That's just the work of two players. I think 53 times today they've played together. It's just phenomenal at this level. Phillips for Priestland. Cuthbert tackle from O'Driscoll. Wales come around the corner and try and go again. That kick is going to just bobble its way into touch just inside the Irish 22. Since it may well be Welsh ball. Did it come off an Irishman on the way through? Yeah, again, we just see Ireland here, just a little bit slower than Wales coming up, but they have their men covered. Great tackle again by O'Driscoll. Priestland, nowhere to turn, uh, just puts the ball into touch, which, uh, given the way this Irish line-out has gone, 13 line-outs, 100% uh, return. Kicking the ball to touch is uh, not doing Wales any favours. Competition is good, says the referee, and the competition is won on this occasion by Wales, as Phillips looks to test the Irish defence and Sexton and Healy looks to hold them up. Ball should be there for Wales. Phillips says nobody on this near side goes to Coombs and Ball set up for Alan Wynne-Jones. Ireland set their defence up quickly. Line speed decent, don't allow Wales to get up ahead of steam but the Welsh have secured possession again and as they have it they don't control it, and Ireland come pouring through, and it's eventually knocked forward by Warburton. And the captain drops his head, and you made the point to me at half-time, you're not convinced that Sam Warburton is fit. Well, he couldn't be fit, he's played no rugby, and uh, Justin Tipperick is an outstanding open side forward. Uh, again, you just see the pressure here, it's the other way around this time, O'Driscoll makes the tackle, and Darcy is the one who's in over the top looking for this deal. But look at the way Ireland are hurrying and harassing at the breakdown. Uh, Conor Murray putting the pressure on there, and, and Warburton to me, he's not fit. I'll give you an interesting stat, Royal. Uh, Wales have lost 10 of the last games as we see a change, Paula Pala coming off. But, uh, comes off and Dantui comes on. The point I was making, Wales have only won one of their last 10 games with Warburton as captain, which is incredible given that he was the Lions captain. And listen to the ovation that O'Connell is getting. Well, he's put in 54 minutes. He said he was fine after the chest infection, but... He was on a course of antibiotics. You couldn't be fine four days after that. And Marty Moore coming in for the second cap. And uh, it just shows the confidence that Ireland have in the bench to be making these changes at this stage of the game. The rain, as you can see, has started to fall. Still, Balance, same as last. Lots of blue sky up there, but should only be a shower that'll pass, but makes the conditions just a little bit more Bind, difficult. Crouch. Do you know what I think as well, Ryle? It's almost a, a nod to Dan Tui. You played so well last week, we're not afraid to take the captain off and give you another opportunity. I can't find it. Yeah, OK, let's come and have a look. Let's go. Yeah. There we are. Close. Have we come? Have we come? Closer. Want you closer? Closer again, please, Red. Thank you. Crouch. Bind. Set. Penalty goes to Wales. Marty Moore is penalised on that far side. Surely Halfpenny will be called up. Go, go. 55 minutes though, Royal, before he gets a shot at goal. I mean, that tells you everything about Ireland's discipline. Joe Smith spoke about it coming into the game and they've been true to that. You just see Warburton gets it back from uh, Keen Healy as he was binding there. But Marty Moore has had a phenomenal rise. He's up against a wily old character in Gettin Jenkins and... Uh, he just said, welcome to the real world, son. 
Here is Lee Halfpenny. 357 international points. 26 of those have come in his previous five caps against Ireland. On the day of his 50th international cap, it's remarkably his first shot at goal. No doubt, up go the flags, Wales are on the board. 56 minutes gone, Ireland 16, Wales 3. Yeah, you expect them to slap those all the time, but if anything, I think the weather conditions now will make it even more difficult for Wales because we know their set piece has been poor. And uh, once again, Ireland, they have managed to starve the likes of Jamie Roberts, uh, Cuthbert, George North. They've had precious little opportunity with the ball in hand. Sexton gets us underway again. Fanatau calls and waits, and Irish players get to him. It was Carney that made the tackle. Phillips with the kick. Rob Carney back and in position. Handling just that little Come bit on, more Craig. difficult now. Uh, Sexton fires at Priestland outside his 22, gathers the ball. Fired over the head of Falatau to Lee Halfpenny. Up quickly came Rob Carney. And Carney looked like he was held back for a moment. The ball is going to be grounded by Wales. And the crowd reacted, and I can understand why, to a momentary hold back from Halfpenny on Carney. But not enough in the referee's view. Well, he was definitely interfered with there, but I think the ball was so far away from him, there was no way that he was ever going to get there. Murray. Sexton has a little look out wide out. and sends the kick cross field. Carney chases, Carney wins. O'Mahony scoops possession for Ireland. Darcy. Good work from Gordon Darcy. How do I know? Goal is there for Conor Murray. Peter O'Mahony. Just about held on to. Murray looking to dig it out. <laughs> and Ireland get the penalty. And Wales ill discipline at times. Some of it has been forced by Ireland, but some of it has been through their own inability to hold themselves back from doing silly things like that. Yeah, I agree 100% with you. But Royal, it's, it's born out of sheer frustration because they have no momentum. They just can't get into the game. They've been squeezed out at every opportunity. Ireland, it's all about just pressure. 50-50 ball. Okay. Again, Rob Carney coming up, putting pressure on the receiver. Omani, every time he gets the ball, he looks to go forward. Ball presentation is good. Gethin Jenkins is off his feet, interfering with play there. Looks good, it is good. Sexton continues to keep the scoreboard ticking over for Ireland. We head towards the hour mark, Ireland lead it by 19 points to three. Yeah, again, a marvellous kick there from Johnny Sexton. And again, Ryla make the point, points differential has decided so many Six Nations game. We all thought that this would be a one-score game. I know there's 20 minutes to go, but Ireland must keep the foot on the accelerator in terms of the pressure that uh, it must put on Wales. Ball is turned over, Wales have it. Here's Warburton, Jamie Roberts is wrapped up by Darcy as Ireland go in search of the ball of the breakdown again, Manage but don't win it. Lydiot takes it on, Devon Toner does enough to put him to ground. Phillips for Gethin Jenkins. Two Irish players there. One is Marty Moore, the other Jamie Heaslip. Priestland, and it's knocked forward in contact. And it's advantage Ireland as Falatau looks to now, good, get the ball back for Wales, but he's not going to be able to do it. Just knock on. And it's there now for Keen Healy. Murray 
O'Driscoll and Carney will go after that, but the box kick is not executed well. And the referee has decided he's going to go back and give the scrum to Ireland through the original knock-on. Yeah, you can see Conor Murray grimacing there. He knows that's a, a poor kick out of him. But again, it's the pressure in defence, the line speed coming up. Ireland, time and time again, are forcing Wales into making the mistakes. Uh, the defensive pressure they've exerted today, uh, exemplary as we see Fergus McFadden coming on. And Andrew Trimble is the one that's called ashore. Trimble was receiving a little bit of attention earlier on about five minutes ago and clearly they've decided let's not risk it and again he's getting a well-deserved uh, response from the crowd because everything he's done today has been excellent great game Andrew Trimble and Wales are gonna bring the changes as well into the game comes Ken Owens which means Hibbert is gone and Rodri Jones comes in as well which means that Adam Jones is gone Two changes in the front row for Wales. Yeah, Rodri Jones, uh, a young tight head from the Scarlets, uh, a lot expected of him in Wales. Adam Jones, marvellous career, he won't go on forever. This guy is really highly rated by those who, uh, who follow Welsh rugby. Some attention for one of the Irish players two or three of the medical staff around just trying to see who it is is it O'Mahony? yeah I think it is he needs an old rub every game really puts his body on the line here's your mark right up close hit high and clearly they all do yeah. and there's an X factor about his physicality that you would have said that O'Driscoll has as well. There's just that extra bit where he doesn't Trump. seem to have any caution button in his brain at all. And I can tell you, Riley, he's played like that since he's been 12 years of age. He slip. Murray. Darcy. And Wales just stand back and let him come at them. Murray. Box kick. It's better this time. Taken though by Cuthbert and Rory Best, who was there to make the tackle. But Wales have ball and oh, no, Priestland wait, decides to play yeah, for territory. Thanks, Doesn't execute particularly well. And Rob Carney gathers and hoops one high and half. But he's had to come a long way. And Carney's gone after it again. And it's popped back on the Irish side after Two a knock forward. First. Two knock ons. First in the air. First one yeah, is from Wales. The put into the scrum will be to Ireland. It's incredible, Ryan. The number of times we've seen Ireland kick the ball where the receiving Welsh player has an Irish player breathing down his neck. Uh, Ireland in the autumn internationals guilty of kicking far too long. No chance for the chaser. But Rob Carney on this occasion, he's the one who put in the kick, chasing it. 50-50 ball, and that has been the story of Ireland's kick chase today. Same again. Good heights. Crouch. Bind. Set. Wales look to get a shove on, but Ireland happy to control and counter and he slip picks and Phillips half-heartedly wraps himself around the Irish number eight's legs eventually puts him to ground Sexton Welsh line up quickly in behind it goes Carney against Halfpenny and Halfpenny knocks it into touch and the touch judge is not having any he doesn't agree and the ball will be for Wales. Already in touch, says Wayne Barnes. Irish crowd furious. Wales through Coombs without Mahoney for attention, but illegally. And the penalty will be to Wales. Deal with him. Go and deal with him. You go and deal with him. Stop. I stop! Did, I didn't mean to. Just stop there, you know what I mean? Stop! Contact's in the air. Okay, I'm going to talk to him about his reaction. 
don't don't get up and scream at me. You're ca- players, I'm telling you. OK, yeah. if you carry on, I'm going to put you in a bin. Do you understand? Oh, sorry, sorry, Relax. The captain is number eight. I'll talk to him. You've made contact in the air. You know it's dangerous. Let me deal with it, please. Well, it was a definite penalty, Peter Romani interfering with the, the Welsh player. He's cribbing about the reaction afterwards, but look, he has the high moral ground at the moment. He's better off keeping his mouth shut, but worry, I see, for Ireland now, because uh, Dan Tui looks Green as if he has a, a hand injury. You're just watching the reaction here. Go on, Peter, better than that. Well, while you watch that, there is another change. Uh, Tui has been brought straight down the tunnel to the dressing room area, and... Well, there's a replay, and that's only made the crowd more angry. Into the game has come Tommy O'Donnell. Precent, Roberts, O'Donnell makes the tackle. Phillips wrapped up by Devon Toner. That's a big hit from Devon Toner. Wales forced backwards, forced into the mistake, and Ireland look to run it back. Darcy changes the point of attack. Wales have a couple of despairing dives at him, eventually put him to ground. Falatau competes, Murray gets the ball, but not clean ball. Lydiot feels he's turned it over. But Ireland don't control it. All a little scrappy from both sides. Phillips. Alan Wynne Jones, O'Mahony in after the ball again. Hands away now, 7 3. Phillips short side, Falatau the only one there. Jenkins. Again, notice how quickly the Irish defensive line is up to make those tackles. They now go wide and try and punch a hole out there as Roberts and North combine and Darcy. Did just enough to get to the bootlaces of the big man. Here is Priestland, Williams, Rory Best makes the tackle. Phillips again. As Wales go towards the Irish 22, Ken Owens sets it up. Wales flood midfield, Priestland to Cuthbert. Offloads are good, Lydiot. Wales have men over, but they don't control the ball. And down was Jamie Roberts to secure possession and Sexton gets to him Phillips North McFadden makes the tackle Henry goes in search of the ball and the referee says penalty Wales which Phillips takes quickly and they're looking for something to give them hope in the final 14 minutes or so Alan Wynne Jones Phillips Ireland defensive line being asked all the questions now. Roberts runs into three. Heaslip goes after the ball. Healy as well. And penalty is offered as Gethin Jenkins comes tearing in to try and secure possession. Phillips isn't going to hang around. Goes quickly. Feigns to pass. Holds on himself. And Warburton is four metres short of the Irish line. Moore makes the tackle. But Wales inch closer. And is that a penalty? It is, but it's to Ireland because he saw the line and he did at least two, if not three, movements. And the penalty is against Rodri Jones. Well, it looked as if they were going to score, but uh, you, you are allowed one movement. It has to be immediate. He took two, if not three. It looked as if Wales were bound to score, but Ireland trusted themselves in defence. You just see it here, young Rodri Jones. He's gone to ground there, second movement there, and that's it. Wayne Barnes in the right position, but Ireland again, superb defence. Jack McGrath is going to come into the game for Ireland. He win his fifth international cap, which means that Keane Healy, who was receiving attention, is coming out. Uh, Encouragement from... Healy for McGrath. 44th international cap today. 
I think he's in the form of his life, Ryle. The new scrummaging laws uh, on engagement really suit his explosive power, but uh, it's his ability to carry with Sean O'Brien out of this side. He has uh, more responsibility in that area, and uh, he has really carried it through in both games in this Six Nations so far. Moraine has abated. Don't close Wales! The problem, of course, for Ireland is uh, somebody, probably Jamie Heaslip, will have to go into the second row if uh, we've had a scrum. We haven't had one since Dan Tuway has been forced off. Slap back in a rare core line out from Ireland, but possession secured, and Conor Murray will complete the job with something for McFadden to chase. And catch comes from Williams, McFadden gets there. Two or three Irish players surround him. Did the referee Second shout kick. Maul? And we did not. Yeah, referee just explaining there, Williams was the guy who took the kick, so therefore uh, he'll get the put into the scrum. But again, Roy, I've, I've, I've made mention of it already, but Ireland's kicking game today has been absolutely fantastic. Again, Fergus McFadden, the one now who closing the space, the pressure. But look at the number of green jerseys looking in. They're trying to affect the choke tackle, but uh, Williams managed to get the ball to ground. Two seconds. Balance, Crouch. nice height. Crouch! It's O'Mahony who's gone into the second row. He slips still, anchors out the scrum. Five. Henry on this near side, O'Donnell Six. on that far side. The Welsh back row remains the same, and Ireland get the shove on and Falatau picks the ball up but Henry is standing and waiting to make the tackle and Wales retreat about 10 yards from where the actual scrum took place Fire! Phillips Priestland little kick in behind for his three quarter line to chase Connor Murray watched it all the way got there Wales arrived but possession should be secured and is secured Royal, you go back to this previous scrum. You talk about hunger in a game. That's Jack McGrath, loose head. Peter O'Mahony in the second row behind him. Marty Moore, a tight head. And Ireland just drive Wales backwards. A few more changes coming for Wales, as you can see. Jake Ball, the man with the big beard, is going to make his international debut. And into the game also is going to come Paul James and Justin Tapuric, who many Welsh fans believe should have been starting. I think it should have been starting. Um, probably played well. Probably didn't take stand out as much as people would have expected against Italy last week. But uh, I think he's an out and out uh, seven, a great link player. Out comes Lydia. And Coombs comes out as well. Devon Toner secures possession for Ireland. And they go to the wall again. And Heaslip has at the back in Ireland. Continue. Heaslip ducks out of the way and uh, lets the train form in front of him again. It's incredibly well delivered as Murray peels away five metres short of the Welsh line. Ball not controlled on this near side, knocked forward, Welsh possession. After all the good work of them all, Ireland don't manage to hold on to possession. Phillips will feed Priestland. And down the line goes Priestland, and the referee says, advantage over. Rob Carney. Runs it straight back, the ball presented well. Murray has Jamie Heaslip, and Heaslip little kick in behind, and Heaslip's going after this himself, but surely Halfpenny will beat him there, he does. 
Yeah, the kick just a little bit uh, too deep. But you go back to that previous mall, Royal, and the thing that really impresses me, Ireland with only half of their starting pack, the personnel doesn't matter, the execution is oh, the same. Stop, you're all off! And you have to consider the forwards coach and his impact. No question about that. John Plumtree wasn't known by a lot of people here in Ireland, but he's a very good track record. And uh, since he's come in, I think uh, what wonders with this Irish pack. Cronin comes in and best, who's put in another terrific shift, is called out. But I'd love to see, Royal, the stats for the tackles that Ireland's front five have made, because Rory Best has really put in a very good shift there, as had Kean Healy, Devon Toner, really solid work from everybody up front. Alan Wynne-Jones, Mike Phillips and Rhys Priestland. Williams, Sexton in along with Darcy to make the tackle and Warburton is there to try and help but tackle Ireland uh, flooded that breakdown tackle and tackle. haven't got the ball back no it's Welsh ball and not surprisingly Phillips is not hanging about but you feel as you have gone for a while it's now very much a lost cause from a Welsh That's perspective spinning. yeah Ireland even giving away the penalties in the right part of the field Phillips, Owens, Jamie Roberts up quickly came Sexton I think and it's knocked forward and it should be Irish ball and it will be with the put into the scrub. Now you just see all the Irish players tapping each other on the back, their workload has been exemplary here and uh, again just the speed coming up Johnny Sexton forcing another Welsh player into error who is it the player who plays outside him every week for Racine Metro Jimmy Roberts I'm sure we'll have a chat about that right, afterwards and ten green Johnny Sexton will play no further part. Paddy Jackson into the game. Jackson to win his seventh international cap. And again, an outstanding ovation here for Johnny Sexton. Superb today. Great to see him in the form that everybody knows he's capable of. Uh, the dominant number 10 in Northern Hemisphere rugby on a world stage now. He's closing ever down to the great Dan Carter in terms of the control that he exerted that here today. Uh, super performance from him. Play away if it's stationary. Oh, look, I'm gonna, he's going to be grabbed. <laughs> Crouch. Five. Set. It's a terrific attacking opportunity for Ireland. He slipped can see it and digs it out for Murray and now O'Driscoll back and inside and out ball presented as Warburton goes looking for it but it's there for Ireland first man he was tackler Jack McGrath stopped in his tracks Sean Cronin explosive power of Cronin Jackson Darcy Miles scamper back to make the tackles Ireland now inside the Welsh 22, Rob Carney with his brother on his shoulder as Wales try to force him into touch. Oh. But he just Hold about that. holds on. Marty Moore, McGrath and Cronin there to secure possession for Ireland. Peter O'Mahony. He slipped there beside him. Murray, Jackson, Darcy, McFadden just couldn't hold on. Ball spilled forward. And okay, Wales no, will get the put into the scrum. And we're just seeing a, a little bit of the effect of the, the rain there that we had in the second half. But uh, really, this game has been over for a long time. And Ireland pinning Wales down in their own half of the field. Just some of the little interplays that we're so used to from uh, 
the Joe Schmidt inspired Leinster sides and I think Joe Schmidt Royal has had a huge impact on the way Ireland have played this game today a tactical masterclass I would suggest from the Ireland coach Crouch Bind Sack Next for Ireland, of course, away to England for the Welsh, it's home uh, against the French on a Friday night. Paul James into the game, win his 50th international cap in the Welsh front row. Phillips, Priestland, Moore makes the tackle. Phillips again, there is James. Ball is available in Ireland. Turn it over again. Penalty Ireland, Wales not rolling away. And Phillips and Omani continue at each other. There's really only been one winner of that particular duel. Well, I think Ireland have won all the individual duels. That's been the key to their success today. You know Mike Phillips, he's a feisty character, and uh, you often see opposition playing on that. But uh, I'm afraid Mike Phillips has played second fiddle to this Irish side today. Let's talk man of the match. Yeah, I mean, outstanding performances all coming from uh, Green. I think Paul O'Connell's laid down a marker early on in the game with uh, a big hit, great leadership. Johnny Sexton, uh, superb from start to finish. But uh, really for me, Peter Romani, the sustained excellence that he has shown over the last two games, his poaches at the right time of the match, his uh, big defence, big carries. He is my RBS Six Nations man of the match. And he's still out there encouraging himself. And focus. Come half a marks here, so make sure you keep your line. Okay. Hey. Uh, lots of running repairs. Number nine. All completed now, and we will resume with the penalty, which Jackson will send into the Welsh 22. Maybe not as much distance on it as he would have liked. And there, nonetheless. And Ireland were about to make a substitution there and Brian O'Driscoll came across and went no, no, not yet which suggests Murray is required for what comes next and it'll start with a mall and Ireland inch forward and continue to inch forward and Wales grasp at bodies but they're the wrong bodies because Ireland continue on their way and the crowd are on their feet and they want this finish and Ireland had the numbers and now Murray considers the break and he goes and Ireland are over Jackson crowns a wonderful move and a wonderful moment And after it all simmers down, there will be another seven points on the board for Ireland. Yeah, what a way to finish the game. And, uh, you know, you don't want to see this nastiness. Ireland have been in control from start to finish. I think Ireland players unhappy with the way that uh, Liam Williams came in on top of Paddy Jackson when he was grounding the ball. But look, you go back to this. This is the story of the game. Ireland dominant up front. Wales powerless to do anything about the ball. Look at Jack McGrath there shouting at Conor Murray. Ireland moving the point of attack. Jackson unopposed. Uh, Liam Williams, to be fair to him, I don't think there was any great intent in that. Uh, slides in. There is contact there. He does go in with his elbow. And all of us looks worse in slow motion. But Paddy Jackson... To his credit, he got up back on his feet and he's going to take the conversion. And Connor Murray has been called ashore and Boss is on now. And Jackson adds the extra two. And Ireland have a 26 points to three lead. And I see Mike Phillips has made his way. And 
and I wonder, was that at the referee's request or have we had a change at scrum half? We'll just double check that for you, took our eyes off it for a moment while we were looking at that conversion, but Phillips is gone. Yeah, I think Warren Gatlin might have got him out of there before he got himself in more trouble. If you look at the margin, all right, 23 points this week, 22 against Scotland last week. In the context of, as I mentioned it earlier on, points differential, you really couldn't ask for more. I think that it's possible that Mike Phillips has been sinned in. Well, I did hear the referee saying he's gone off, so maybe he did flash a card. Warburton peels away. Henry makes the tackle. We'll confirm that yellow card or not in a moment it matters not at this moment in time as this will be the last play of the game Priestland goes into play scrum half Priestland again Falatau Wales will go back and they will lick their wounds no doubt and come out fighting against the French in a fortnight's time. We just didn't have the answers when Ireland asked the questions. The intensity wasn't there. And when plan A didn't work, plan B didn't seem to be apparent. And a team that has been so magnificent over the last two seasons has gone from, well, might be a little extreme to say from riches to rags in one performance but this has been abject for them and Ireland look to rub salt in the wounds and Paddy Jackson goes back inside as Halfpenny tries to bat the ball away and Carney has it and Ireland go from their own 22 to the Welsh 22 and is there more in this? The lungs must be burning from both sets of players Ireland continue on their way is there more he slipped with the crowd roaring them on boss back inside and it's forward and the opportunity is gone but they're on their feet and to a man and a woman and a child they roar their approval for what they have just seen from...